Hello, this is Bern, and on today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you what you need to focus on instead of passion, which incidentally happens to be the most important predictor of the longevity, the depth, and the fulfillment of a lifelong committed relationship, including a marriage. Stick with me. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to your great LifeTV.com, a space where I share with ambitious, conscious, heart-centered, and successful women how you can create the relationship of your dreams and attract the kind of quality man you want as a direct result of stepping into the most alive, feminine version of you without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or crazy tricks. Now, passion is the word of the day. So many human beings, experts, relationship gurus talk about passion as if it's the most important thing in a relationship. And don't get me wrong, passion is sacred. Passion is a little bit of the glue that sticks the relationship together through thick and thin, but it's not the most important factor in a relationship. It's one of the factors that needs to be present. And when you secretly are craving more and more passion, instead of focusing on the fundamentals that create the longevity and the depth of a relationship, not only do your relationship, does your relationship weaken, but you're building the foundation of a lifelong marriage into maybe sand. So what I want to share with you is if you look at different magazine books, blog posts, videos, you, you will see that there's such an urge in convincing you that chemistry and sexiness and passion uh, is what really counts. And while it has its place and it's definitely important, the determinant factor in the longevity and depth of your relationship is going to be the depth and the quality of your friendship with your partner. That's right, it's not sexy, it's not necessarily flashy, but it's the truth. And it's not the truth that I came up with uh, just before this video, it's the truth that's been documented by the most congruent, relevant, and thorough studies that have ever been done on what makes relationships work. So. Rather than just saying, okay, well, the depth of friendship is important. Well, how the hell does that work? And how do, what do I do to make it happen? I'm going to share with you some thoughts around what are some qualities that are important to sustain, maintain, and foster in the depth of friendship and what you can do to step into a deeper friendship with your partner. Number one thing you can do, and I know it's going to sound crazy, is to become a better friend to yourself. Why? Because it's impossible to create a long-term, lifelong friendship with someone when you are not befriending yourself. And befriending yourself means understanding your needs, understanding your worth, understanding your wants, doing the things that make you fulfilled so you're not entering a relationship from a place of emptiness, from a place of uh, filling up a void. So step number one seems simple, and it is simple, but it's not easy, which is being best friends with yourself first and foremost. Number two, is when you connect with that human being that you're creating this lifelong commitment to is be hungry for what's new. Why? Because what is not new after months and years will become prevalent. The things that don't change, the things that are static, the things that are repetitive, the things that become part of your day-to-day -day life are so present that unless you're focused on simultaneously noticing the nuance and the beauty and the split second decisions that weren't there the day before, you're gonna miss them. So be hungry to get to see them for who they are today, the 2019 uh, July version versus the version two years ago, which is maybe predominantly the same, but with a few differences that make all the difference in the world. Number three, presence is one of the most important gifts you can give to your partner to deepen the bond of, fr of a friendship. Why? Because Presence is where being seen happens. Presence is where being felt happens. Presence is where you can notice that someone's hurting, even though they don't seem to want to share with you that they're hurting. Presence is that space where you can anticipate needs when you need to and step into a higher form of functioning where it's not just your mind and it's not just your soul and it's not just your feelings, but the combination of those three in ways that wouldn't have happened had you not been in the here and now as much as possible. Number four, <laughs> vulnerability also deepens the friendship because vulnerability deepens the bond. Vulnerability is what makes the conversation continue. Vulnerability is what makes you human. Vulnerability is what gives him the permission 
to be a flawed human being like we all are and to show up without an armor and to be willing to step into your help when he gets a chance to feel what you're feeling instead of just think what's happening. When he gets a chance to feel what you're going through, his level of action and commitment change. His level of stepping into action changes. His ability to open his heart and share with you what's going on inside his own universe changes. And that creates a radically different type of relationship than the one where both of you are guarding your hearts against getting hurt. Yes, the chance and the likelihood that your partner might use something against you exists, and that's a risk. But the bigger risk is that you die without expressing what you came here to express. Number five, you're going to argue. You're going to fight sometimes. You're going to say things that don't necessarily uh, reflect the deepest and the most amazing part of your being. When you catch yourself arguing, remember the end in sight. Meaning, when you catch yourself arguing, and you will, and the reason for arguing is simply to win, and it's going to happen, recognize that the end in sight is come up with a better outcome. What's the better outcome? How do you want to feel? What do you want to have happen? How do you want to connect? How do you want things to change? Because if you focus on that, the argument will change in scope and in depth and in meaning and in form. But if you focus on my wounded heart needs to hurt the other person before I continue getting hurt, then you're going to start eroding the friendship to the point where both of you are not going to want to share things and that's the beginning of the end. Number six, this is so important and so many people miss the boat on this one and you need to be willing to break your partner's pattern. What does that mean? You're gonna find yourselves in moments that are dark, sad, painful, you're gonna encounter suffering, you're going to encounter people who want to hurt the relationship, people who wanna hurt you or your partner and if you don't have the skill of breaking your partner's pattern and helping them come out of their feeling of overwhelm, then the likelihood that your relationship will make it is, is very small. Why? Because life is really tough and the things that you'll go through if you're with someone for a long, long time, unless you're in a bubble in a planet outside of this earth, are going to be really tough. So when you have the ability to help a person laugh when they only want to cry, or to have the person look into themselves when they're not noticing. Like being able to play with that energetic space of helping your partner break out of their own suffering, break out of their own anger, break out of their own uh, feeling of hurt, and help them heal through a new state that wasn't there before. It's the ability to self-repair. That is so important in your relationship. And the last one that I'll share with you today is don't threaten the end. Why? Because it's so easy when you're feeling ultimately hurt to come close to pushing the atomic button, the detonator that will end the relationship. And when you play with that, when you come close to pushing the button and you threaten to end the relationship multiple times, it won't take long for one day to go one centimeter closer to that button and pushing it. When you push it, it might be too late and there may not be any coming back. So when you feel you're about to push the end of the relationship, think twice, go for a walk, go for a run, talk to another friend, uh, do push-ups, do sips, come back and from a different place, talk about what's important. I'm not saying you should never end the relationship. I'm saying don't unnecessarily threaten it because it might end it prematurely in a way that didn't have to happen. Hope this is helpful useful and insightful to you in some way. If it is, I'm gonna ask you to do three things. Number one, click like or thumbs up on this video. Number two, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and click the little bell to be notified of new episodes. Number three, on the first link on the description of this video, you'll find a way to attend a free masterclass that I created for you. So all you do is click on the first link, enter your name and email, and you'll be taken to a place where you'll watch a presentation on how you can step into the best relationship of your life. If you want some help and holding accountability, there's a second link under the description of this video that will allow you to apply to work with me. Thank you so much for connecting with me. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and conscious life.